hi guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and this is your first time here you're also welcome in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make this pleated shoulder caftan dress the name of the fabric i'm working with is called a duchess fabric and i made use of three and a half yards the first step is to fold the width of the fabric into two equally after folding into two i went ahead to refold it into two again so i practically folded this fabric into four so the essence of folding this fabric this way is because I don't want a joining to be on the shoulder line. So this is how the top of the fold should be. And this is how the edges of the fold should be on the side. On this side of the fold, I would mark the neck width, which is 3 inches. For a plus size person, you should mark 4 inches. Now for the neck depth, I marked one and a half inches to connect both points together. So now I'll leave the neck measurements this way and later on I'll trim out the neckline for the front piece of this dress alone. Now the next step is to place my tape from this fold to mark half of my shoulder measurement. The next step is to mark how wide you want the pleat on the shoulder to be. Since the pleat would be on fold, I want it to be two and a half inches wide. So to achieve this, you multiply that two and a half inches by two. And I had 5 inches. Now I went ahead to mark 5 inches. Now the next measurement is the sleeve length. I want the length of my sleeve to be 12 inches. Now I went ahead to adjust the fabric. So from this point I marked initially, I would place my tape horizontally to mark 12 inches plus 1 inch. So in allowance to the M of the sleeve, that will be 13 inches altogether. The next step is to mark the sleeve opening. I placed my tape on this point to mark 9 inches and connected both points together. Now the next thing I'll do is to place my tape on the tip of this line to mark 1 inch inward. Now I place the tape from the shoulder line vertically downwards. So my actual hip line is 24 inches. But instead of marking 24 inches, you are going to be adding extra 6 inches to that. And that will be 30 inches altogether. So you should do the same to your measurements. Now on this point I marked, I will extend the line. Now on this line, I will place my hip circumference divided by 4. So on the side of this measurement, I added extra 4 inches as the allowance. But if you want your dress to be wider than mine, then you should have about 6 inches allowance to the hip circumference. Alright, so once this has been done, the next step is on how to connect these two points together. So to easily do this, I would place my ruler on the tip of this line. To extend this line as shown. Now, I would also extend this line to meet the tip of the new line. After doing this, I placed my tip from this angle to mark 3 inches and made a curve on both sides to meet this center point. Now, I won't be needing these edges anymore, so I just went ahead to cancel it. The next step is to mark the full length of the dress. I place my tape from the shoulder line. To mark the full length. So the full length of my dress is 59 inches plus 1 inch M allowance which made it 60 inches altogether. The next step is to extend this point vertically downwards to the M. Alright, so the next thing I'll do here is to trim out the neckline. After trimming out the neckline, I'll go ahead to trim out the sides.
So recall that there is no joining on the shoulder line. But I would need to create a guide in such a way that I'm able to rule out the shoulder line for this dress. To do this, I would notch the neck width as shown. And also notch the center of the sleeve opening. Alright, I'll spread out the fabric. So take note that these markings I'm about to make would be on the right side of the fabric. So recall that this dress does not have a joining on the shoulder. So this will be difficult to identify where the shoulder line of this dress should be. But recall that I already notched the neck width and the center of the sleeve opening initially. So it was easy for me to connect the points I notched together. So I'm also going to connect the neck width on the other side to the center of the sleeve opening as shown. Next step is to place the measuring tape on the neck width to mark the center. So here I have it to be 6 inches divided by 2 which is 3 inches. So I marked it on 3 inches. Alright, now I divided my shoulder measurements by 2 and what I had is 7 inches. From this center point, I marked 7 inches on this side and also placed it on the center point to mark 7 inches on this other side as well. So the distance between these two points is my actual shoulder measurement. Now the next step is to mark the pleats which will be on the shoulder. From this point, I marked two and a half inches because that is how wide I want the pleats to be on my shoulder. Now, on this point, I marked two and a half inches. I folded it into two equally, making sure that the fold is two and a half inches wide. Now, I went ahead to pin it together and then folded the pleats towards the direction of the sleeve. So, on this side of the pleats, I just kept holding down the pleats together by pinning it. So while pinning the pleats, make sure that the pleats doesn't get to the hip line as it might be time consuming and even not necessary for the pleats to get to the hip line. Now the next step is to make the second pleat on the other side of the shoulder line. From this point, I marked two and a half inches and folded the pleats into two as shown to pin the bottom of the pleats. Now I would keep pinning just the way I did for the other side of the pleats. The next step is to fold in the side of the dress. So I'm going to assume that from this shoulder line downwards to the side should be the back of the dress and I want the length of the pleat here to stop at 12 inches. Now just to be sure that the pleat is well folded, I place my tape from this side of the fold to mark 2.5 inches which is the width of the pleat. After tracing out the points, I connected the points together. Now from the shoulder line to this other side, I assumed that it would be my front piece. Now. The length of the pleats here should be directly to the waistline. So my waistline is 15 inches. I placed my tape from the shoulder line to mark 15 inches. Now I placed my tape horizontally to mark 2.5 inches from the fold as well and connected all points together. So another thing I did was to take the dress to the ironing board to iron the pleats properly on this side. After which I took this to the sewing machine to stitch directly on this line I chopped. And when I got to the end of this other line I stopped stitching. Since this other side is the back piece of the dress I also marked 12 inches for the length of the pleats on the back piece and connected the points together and on the front piece of this dress I marked a length of 15 inches 
just the way I did for the other side of the plate. Now I connected the points together, took the dress to the ironing board to iron the plates on this side. After that, I folded in the sleeve on this side, took the dress to the sewing machine to secure the pleats starting from the top of this line to the end of this line. Alright guys, so this is how the pleats on the shoulder should be. The next step is to make the inner belt that would be attached to the waist of this dress. So this is the fabric for the belt. The width is 4 inches. Why? The length of the belt is about 34 inches. So now I would fold this belt into two to secure the sides of the belt by half inch following the direction of the truck. So whatever sewing process I'm making on this first belt is also what I would do on the second belt. Alright, when I got to this end, I stopped stitching and I left the O on this side in which I'll be turning the belt to the right side of the fabric. Now the belt is ready, so I flipped the dress to the wrong side of the fabric. So this is the front piece of the dress here. So the next thing I did was to place one side of the belt on the end of the split, which is on the waistline, to pin together. So after pinning, I flipped it to the right side and took this to the sewing machine to stitch directly on this line. And on this other side, I would make the same stitching process. The belts have been properly secured and the next step is to stitch the M of the sleeve by folding it half inch in and further folding it by half inch and I'll do the same for the second sleeve. After stitching the sleeves properly, I folded the fabric right side to the right side facing each other and took this to the sewing machine to stitch the sides by half inch following the direction of the chalk. Alright, after stitching the dress, I turned the dress to the right side of the fabric. The next step is to cut out the neckline for the front piece. To do this, you should fold the center front piece into two. So on the side of the neckline, which I notched and used as a reference in indicating the shoulder line, I would place my tape directly from that point I notched vertically downwards to mark 17 inches and on this point i mark 17 inches i went in to mark one inch to connect this point to the neck width as shown after this i would extend this line vertically downwards keeping a distance of one inch from this center fold The next step is to trim out the neckline down to the M of the center front piece. The 
the next step is to spread out the dress so obviously you can see there is bound an opening in the center front of this dress so since the strap will be attached to the opening i folded the neckline for the back piece into two to notch the center of the neckline now i placed my tape from this point i notched to take the entire measurement of the opening on this side So when I got to this side, I realized that it stopped at 60 inches and from there I took the measurements and what I have here is 4 inches. So it means that the length of the strap on one side is 64 inches and the length of the strap on this other side would also be 64 inches. So altogether, the length of the strap is 128 inches. Since 128 inches is very long, it required me to join the fabric, which I did here. Alright, the width of this strap is... 5 inches. Now I took this to the ironing board to fold the strap into two equally. After ironing the strap, I brought it back to the table to place the two sides directly on each other. Now, the center line there is very important because that was the actual reason of ironing the strap in the first place. The next step is to mark the neck opening. From the top of this joining, I placed my tape vertically downwards to mark 12 inches. For a plus size person, if you want your neckline to be deeper, you can mark it to 13 inches. Now, to mark how long you want the slit to be at the bottom, I placed my tape from the end of the strap vertically upward to mark 20 inches. If you want yours to be longer than mine, then you should extend it to about 23 inches. Alright, the next thing I did now was to take this to my sewing machine to start a stitch. From this line vertically downwards to the end point of where I chopped initially for the slit opening. After stitching the strap, now I would fold this to the right side of the fabric and you would have it looking this way. So this is the neck opening. Why this is the slit opening at the bottom. So this is the wrong side of my dress. And the next thing I did was to attach the center of the strap directly to the center neckline of the back piece to pin all through the neckline and the opening in the center front of this dress. Now I took this dress to the sewing machine to stitch the edges of the opening to the strap by half inch all through. The final step is to secure the M of this dress by folding it in. Alright guys, so this is the final outcome of the dress. It came out really beautiful. You should give it a try. And if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my videos.